All right, guys, we are back at the news desk with my buddy Tone Vase and Jimmy Song. Hey guys. How you guys doing? Um, anyways, <laughs> Jimmy, amazing talk, like uh, usual. Oh, thank you. I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure. I, I can't. T I couldn't tell how the audience was reacting because the lights were straight in my face. <laughs> So I could barely see like a few people, but I, hopefully it went well. It's hard for me to tell. But. It happens. There, there's something really like, interesting about Jimmy's talks. Um, so he's a developer that teaches development, but he never talks about development. All his talks are about <laughs> money, which is <laughs> like weird. Why is that, Jimmy? Well, so I do have technical talks, and I, I, I have given them at lots of conferences, but that puts people to sleep, man. Like... I had one talk in uh, Germany a while back, and uh, and I was doing like, um, you know, like something on like uh, HC wallets, right? Like how how to, how to implement them and stuff. Started out with like 30 people, like 27 of them left during my talk because it was so boring for them, right? Or they couldn't keep up or something. You gotta make it exciting. You what you you can't. You gotta make talking code exciting. What, the, That's gonna make it special. Well, so the, it's this a challenge. Like, like Satoshi had a challenge. No, no. So I, I, I read an interview with like uh, with Elon Musk, right? And he was saying how like he prefers technical interviews, right? Like how does the you know like Cybertruck exoskeleton work or something like that? And he loves exp he loves explaining that, but no one wants to do any of those interviews, right? The I, I'm trying to like uh, you know keep my audience engaged and understanding. Right? Personally, like that's, uh -huh. I'm, I'm a media guy. I love the money, the one, the money ones. <laughs> uh, I'm not a technical guy, but anyways, Jimmy, you did write this book. Uh, Fiat hmm. ruins everything. That's obvious, but, <laughs> but, what, but what, is, what, what inspired you to write this book and uh, what's in it? What, what, why should people buy, purchase a copy? I purchased a copy, by the way, and I got it signed. It's mine. You can't have it. Um, but anyways. Yeah, so the inspiration from the book actually came as a result of the writing course I took with David Perel, and he, he wrote the foreword for me. And, uh, and yeah, I, I was writing a lot, and I, I have a lot of thoughts. I, I don't necessarily organize them very well. So... After taking the course, I felt like I could write, write like like a superhuman almost, like just be able to take a topic and I know how to get the output that I want and it felt much easier doing so. So I, I started uh, publishing some articles on uh, Bitcoin Magazine. Uh, I took a lot of those and I, w I wanted to just show how corrupt the fiat system is and how much that corruption has just sort of penetrated into the culture without, uh, without us necessarily being aware of it. Uh, and I wanted to expose that not necessarily to like no coiners. I, I wanted to target Bitcoin maximalists, right? It's, we already know fiat ruins everything, but just how much does it ruin everything? Very few people, I think, really understand how much everything is corrupt as a result. And, uh, and that's what I wanted to point out and just sort of give some reflections on and what, what it actually means and how Bitcoin ultimately changes all of the incentives that fiat money has brought on. Well, it, and one of the things about Bitcoin that I love, and I want to get your tone, your, your take on this, is it's, it's a system of aligned incentives. And with fiat, it's a system of misaligned incentives. And you, you see that the most with politicians, right? They're not incentivized to do good by their constituents. Uh, they're incentivized to get as close as humanly possible to the money spigot. Actually, we were talking about this when you came on Simply Bitcoin IRL a couple weeks ago. Um, and I don't think that it's a coincidence that the first country that made Bitcoin legal tender, El Salvador, uh, all of a sudden, the guy that was elected into office is actually doing the things that he was elected for. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a coincidence. <laughs> I don't know. Tone, what's your take on that? Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. Uh, for politicians, the number one thing is basically getting richer and getting reelected and just being more powerful. And uh, Bitcoin has very different incentives. And you also see Bitcoin versus the shit coins. Uh, they're really aligned to just making that coin go up in price where... Uh, I'm not going to say all the people in Bitcoin, but a large fraction of the majority of Bitcoin are here to actually build uh, the network, build the community, like actually try to make the world better. Not everyone, but a significant, I would say the majority of the people uh, versus any other crypto project. I just don't see it when you and you see that when they create another coin, like, you know, it's all about the money. 
And, and I, I've said this before in the past, right? I, I think that crypto doesn't fix the problems of fiat. In fact, it magnifies it. Um, and again, you have systems of misaligned incentives, right? Where, you know, whether it's politicians, a bureaucratic elite benefit from, you know, the privilege of creating money for free that everyone else has to work for. In the case of the shitcoiners, I said it. Um, you know, it, it, again, like uh, what, uh, 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 Vitalik's famous stop the trading, you know, let's let's change the monetary policy, you know, at the flick of a you know, snap of a finger. So, yeah, you know, uh, could, could, would it be possible to say that um, shit coins and fiat ruins everything? Yeah, well, so the entire last part is about fiat and altcoins being sort of beset on two sides, right? Because Bitcoiners are sort of assaulted not just by the fiat system, but by all coins and all coins essentially take the reputation that Bitcoin has earned and take it for themselves by associating themselves with Bitcoin and saying, oh, we're crypto. And, you know, because Bitcoin's been enormously successful, maybe we're going to be successful, too. And sort of taking Bitcoin's good reputation and using it to basically shit on everything, right? Like, and they, they're scamming everybody, take, you know, doing all kinds of evil and immoral things. But getting back to the uh, thing about politics, uh, you know, there, there's a whole chapter in there about politics. Why is it that everybody in politics is super old? Well, the reason is they're getting rich and they, if you're getting rich doing something, you're not gonna give that up, right? There's a reason Nancy Pelosi is worth like $200 million, despite never having been anything other than a politician. How is that possible? Well, she's obviously grifting in like seven ways from Sunday, right? And not just her, I don't wanna pick on the Democrat there because obviously Mitch McConnell and lots of other people have, have the same thing. And they're, they're super old, they're able to just continue rent seeking off of the Cantillon effects and just use that to enrich themselves at the cost of everybody else. If you have a position like that, you're not gonna give it up. And this, this dynamic is everywhere in the fiat system. You have tenured professors that are not retiring. You have federal judges that don't retire, right? Like you, all the room at the top doesn't exist. So you, you get like a generation of people that can't reach the top, right? Like how many postdocs do you know that are, that are in like year 12 of their postdoc looking for a tenure track position, right? Like all of, all of, there's just no room. Like you, you get so many rent seekers, nobody has any you know, incentive to go out of those. It's never about merit anymore. It's all about just, hey, I'm already in this position. I'm gonna make sure you can't get in because I want it. And that, that, that's the dynamic. And I suspect that that's the dynamic going on in all coins right now too. Because what, what does uh, Vitalik do whenever a new you know, you know, platform, altcoin platform comes out? Uh, he, he, this, he, he tries to flood them or whatever. They're, the internecine conflict between all the other altcoins is just as vicious as you know, Nancy Pelosi versus you know, the Democrats that actually, the younger Democrats that want to come to power. Yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's so true, and, and it reminds me of this video. I'm sure you guys saw it on Twitter, right? Where it was, um, it was Senator Lindsey Graham and Senator Elizabeth Warren, and they were shaking hands with President Zelensky. And it was like another 28 billion to to Ukraine, to the Ukraine, um, and Lindsey Graham was like patting this guy in the back. And then I tweeted it out saying, "Separate money from state." And then Lawrence Lepard quote tweeted it. And he said, like, in their words, like, we're all getting fucking rich right now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man, it's a system of misaligned incentives. Anyways, Tone, I know you talk about BRICS all the time. There was some breaking news the other day that BRICS wanted to get off the dollar. They officially announced that and move. And then potentially the article was hinting to potentially Bitcoin becoming part of that. Uh, what, what is your take on that? What was your interpretation of that news? Yeah, there's several really big news happening with the BRICS. They just had their BRICS summit. There was like 100 countries around the world applied to be part of the BRICS. They've announced they're accepting six of them. Uh, it was interesting which six they, they are accepting. Uh, I mean, if Saudi Arabia and Iran get in, I think those are the really, really big ones. Um, as part of the six, Argentina will be there. Hopefully they'll help. But uh, the rumor is they want to create their own like brick currency and there's a lot of rooms gonna be backed by gold i haven't really heard that bitcoin uh backing of it i think that's going to be really really challenging 
uh, for them to create a gold-backed currency. Uh, people don't realize that there are challenges with that uh, that are going to come in. Uh, they're probably going to be trading their own currencies with each other for a while. Either way, this is bad for the U.S. dollar uh, on a slightly intermediate-term basis, not in the near future. Uh, but I think eventually they'll have no choice. They're going to have to uh, just send Bitcoin to each other, which, again, Bitcoin market cap is not ready to handle that anytime soon. But maybe in about a decade, I think it's coming. What are Jimmy's thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I think uh, what, what you're seeing with BRICS is that they're, they're trying to make it into a bipolar world rather than a monopolar world from a monetary perspective. Because for a long time, uh, it's been, you know, dollar domination, the dollar hegemony, as I, I point out in the book. Uh, but that, that dollar hegemony, like, especially with this Ukraine conflict, because essentially what they did was they took Russian assets and that Russia is not, does not want to deal with the dollar at all. And they never will. I don't think the, that that trust is completely yeah, broken. That's not, coming back. that's not coming back. So they need something. And in a sense, the, the economic isolation sort of move that uh, the NATO countries tried to impose on Russia, I think is leading them to there it's kind of forcing them to try something and the BRICS is one of the one of the things that they're trying now like I, I i agree with tone i don't know if this is going to work very well because you have all of these authoritarian countries essentially try trying to launch something that people that they're getting other people to trust like how much credibility do you have if you're like a communist country that like jails like uyghurs and you know, and, and stuff like, I, I don't know if you have that much credibility, honestly. And so, but, so it's gonna be very challenging and it's good, it's a multi-decade thing to get that kind of trust. I don't know if they have sort of the political will to wait it out that long. And if this alliance is strong enough to stay around that long with all the sort of like geopolitical craziness that ho happens over that period of time. Uh, but, you know, they are trying and I, I I, I think they're kind of forced to do that. Um, and, and I think uh, Tone's right, they'll probably trade each other's currencies for a little while. And their currencies will generally be backed by whatever is in their country. So Russia has a lot of natural resources, so it'll be backed by you know food and things like that. China by their manufacturing capacity, Saudi Arabia and Iran by their oil production. Um, and, and, you know, maybe like Brazil and Argentina with their beef production or something like that. But that, that, that's the sort of economic union that they're trying to make. You know, we'll, we'll see how that works. The, the, the thing is, if you really do get into a bipolar world, then you're going to need a bridge currency between the two. That's where I think Bitcoin kind of sneaks in real well. So we'll see. Yeah, the, the bigger problem is these countries have... Well, not Argentina, but uh, in the case of Russia and China, they have very little debt. Uh, meanwhile, the West is a giant disaster. And what people don't realize is the line item of government spending, which is not coming from the Fed, that's coming from the Treasury. And that is interest on cumulative debt that, have been, that has been accumulating since World War II. And people don't realize that that line item, like military spending maybe goes up a little bit, 5-10%, like everything, all the other things, like social security spending, it's all linear if it goes up barely. But that line item of interest on cumulative debt, because there's a deficit every year, and now the interest rates are up from zero to 6%, that item is going to go up exponentially. And in about three to four years, the US will have to pay more money in interest every year than they collect in tax revenue. And the confidence of the world in the U.S. dollar is just going to crater. Yeah, and they they have to pay off that. That like all all a lot of these are like short-term treasury bonds. So when they come due, you you're going to see a spate of money printing just to pay off the interest because there's a huge demand for U.S. Treasuries right now because they're paying a fairly high rate. Um, and you know th this is also how Tether makes a lot of money because they, they they put a lot of money into Treasuries. You make five percent on eighty billion dollars. Uh, you know that that ends up being pretty uh, significant. So we we have uh, weird incentives right now. And but you know I don't think the money printing goes away. One because of the deficit spending, like Tone said, but also the interest. It's not coming from tax revenue. They just they're gonna have to print in order to pay that off. So. 
you get this, uh, you know, in a sense, they can raise the rates as high as they want. I don't know if that stops it this time because the interest is just so damn high. You mean lower the rate as much as possible? Well, I mean, they can heighten it or lower it. <laughs> Either way, it's, it's not going to solve the problem. I, I think they're either pushing on a, uh, on a string, which doesn't work, or pulling on a string that unravels the whole thing. So I want to get you guys, we've got, we got about two, three minutes left. Um, I want to get you guys' thoughts on the current crazy news coming out of Argentina. Uh, where a libertarian candidate won the presidential uh, primary by 11 points. This guy is, <laughs> in terms of moving the Overton window, um, he's saying stuff like central banking is a scam, inflation is theft, and he's popular, right? So it's absolutely bonkers. He says, you know, he's a fan of Bitcoin. Uh, so I want to get your guys' thoughts on that. Tone, uh, you first. I'll go real quick. Look, I, I don't really believe politicians. Uh, the ones that come from the private industry and have never been politicians have a higher per cha percent chance of uh, doing what they say they're going to do. But I like 90% of the time, they say one thing and they don't do it. So I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, but it's also interesting that you know Argentina signed uh, a, a document with the IMF that they would not adopt Bitcoin. That was one of the terms of their loan. So that's going to be really interesting what happens with that. So I, I was in Argentina back last November and I, I, I spent three weeks there and one, one of the things that you find out right away is this is a huge rent-seeking country. MacBooks are like three thousand dollars, right? They're, they're like 900 here. They're like three, they're triple the cost. Where's that money going? Well, it's like tariffs and stuff. The government is extracting as much as they can. If you use a credit card, at least when I was there, it was like 160 pesos to a dollar. But if you do use cash, it's like 300. Now it's like 650 or something. That, that's how much the inflation is happening. So I think the people of Argentina are sick of the hyperinflation that's around the corner. And this, they're, they're listening to this guy because he's the only one that makes sense. Now, like Tone said, most politicians don't do what they say. I disagree that it's, it's like, you know, they're just being dishonest. I think there's like a deep state in every single country that essentially prevents you, right? And they will use every dirty trick in the book to prevent you from doing something. I think you hit the nail on the head. There's an administrative state because we've gotten to the point where it's right up in your face, not even deep anymore, that is fueled by the money printer, right? As long as that money printer stays there, uh, you know, you'll continue to have this, this, com this Frankenstein bureaucracy. It, it's to it's a grow. cancer and it keeps growing and it, it, it just takes over everything. And that that's probably as much in Argentina because you obviously have a lot of grift, right? Like with MacBooks and tariffs and all that.